So my name's Professor John Methven. Uh, I'm here at the University of Reading in the UK, and I'm uh, an expert in the dynamics of cyclones and uh, weather systems and uh, aspects of the atmosphere like the jet stream, which is very important for weather systems uh, uh, on our side of the Atlantic in particular. So a, a cyclone is a, a large scale uh, weather system like a vortex, which is uh, always rotating in the northern hemisphere. It's going around uh, anti-clockwise. And uh, you've, you've no doubt heard of hurricanes. They're, they're a type of tropical cyclone. But uh, the research that we're interested in here is extra tropical cyclones. So they exist in the middle latitudes or the polar regions, uh, although they have many similar properties. The reason we're flying the aircraft in the Arctic is that we're trying to take measurements that tell us about the coupling between the atmosphere and the sea ice underneath. So we know a lot about the atmosphere and we know quite a lot about the sea ice, but in order to predict how they evolve together, we need to understand how they interact with each other. And so to do that, we, we're flying at low levels over the ice, measuring atmospheric uh, turbulence. So that's the way that properties of the ice affect the atmosphere. And uh, at the same time, we're measuring the ice underneath. So for example, exactly how high the ice surface is at a very high uh, frequency, and then also the surface temperature and the albedo, which is how much light is reflected from the surface of the ice. And so that tells us whether there are things like melt ponds or we're flying over a, a bit of ocean between the ice and, and so on. And then we want to relate the properties of the ice to what happens in the atmosphere above. So we have to measure both things at once. Oh, yes. So, so in our experiment, we're actually using two aircraft. Um, and that's because we need to make uh, measurements in situ. So that means within the atmosphere, very detailed measurements at high frequency in time and, and high uh, resolution in space. So that, uh, and in particular, that's information that we can't get from a satellite at low levels. So if with the British Antarctic Survey aircraft, we're flying as low as 50 feet over the ice, measuring turbulent fluxes. So these are the variations in temperature and winds uh, at a frequency of uh, 50 measurements per second or 50 hertz. Uh, and, and so that's the kind of information you just can't infer from satellite data. And so we have to be there, out there flying through the weather systems. And then similarly, we can't just sit at one location, like at a ship or a, or a station on the ground, because we need to fly right through these weather systems that are large. You know, they might be uh, two three, four hundred kilometers across. And so a single point measurement is not very useful. Yeah, we were fantastically lucky in our field campaign because we we were going out to the Arctic in summer to measure in cyclones, but there aren't so many cyclones. And, and uh, this, this year we were very lucky to have four coming right over the area where we were working. They could have been on the other side of the Arctic or or we might have had a three week gap with no cyclones, but we got four. And then also we we need to fly at low levels. We need the need it to be clear sky or at least no low level cloud because you can't fly at low level of the over the ice if the cloud is right down to the ground. And, and so we, we managed to get both sets of conditions and do about 80 hours of science flying, which is uh, fantastic. In, in, in terms of the changing Arctic, though, it's it's been a very dramatic change. So we had to fly to reach the, the edge of the sea ice in, in August. We had to fly about 200, uh, 200 kilometers from the, the town we were staying in called Long Yerbian. But in, in uh, only 10 years ago, that, that ice would have been right there on the north shore of uh, the islands that we were staying on. So it's it's really moving further poles faster every year. Uh, yeah, which is, you know, definitely a sign of 
human-induced climate change. 